Okay, since the door is closed, I think I'm going to start the talk about Vagrant. So Vagrant is a tool to create uh, software environments based on virtual machines. Just a short question in the beginning, as already people, who is using already Vagrant here? Okay, so I'm going to start uh, from the beginning how is actually working background, very basic stuff. And then after, I will show how do we use it in uh, Proxmox, the company which are working at the moment. So some words about me. So I'm a French guy, I'm living in Austria. I speak three languages, yeah, French guy, three languages. I'm a Debian contributor since five years. Before I was doing games packaging. I was a long time sysadmin. I got bored of creating user accounts, and I'm a software developer, which I enjoy more. So, Vagrant. What do you need to start? So, if you are on Linux, you just need to install VirtualBox and Vagrant from a package manager, because it's already packaged in Debian, and Vagrant is using for its virtualization need VirtualBox in the background. Windows OS 6, you have to go to the two, uh, two URLs, click a lot of next, 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 and then you're done. Plus, on Windows, if you want one, you it's interesting to have an SSH client. So we're going to start some exam with some examples so you can see that what Vagrant can do for you. So suppose, for instance, you need a Debian environment where you want to do stuff, you want to break stuff, you want to be very aggressive. With these three commands, you have a brand new, suppose you have installed before Vagrant and VirtualBox, you have a brand new Debian environment on which you can do stuff. Vagrant init, which will download from the Vagrant cloud background uh, some kind of pre-configured disk image. Vagrant app will start that in VirtualBox and Vagrant SSH and you're already inside and you can do stuff. So now, as Vagrant and VirtualBox both are multi-platforms, you can do this, of course, on Linux. You can do this on OS X, and you can do this on Vagr on Windows with the same set of commands. Always is Vagrant init, Vagrant app, Vagrant SSH. So it's actually a very fast way to get a Debian system installed on Windows. So it's virtualized, but still it's very fast. Now some more examples to start. So there is this guy who has written this book, Data Science is a Common Line, where he explained how to use R and a lot of data science tools. But actually, I don't know really how they're working. But to get the stuff quickly installed for everyone, he packaged all the stuff into a vagrant image, so you can install that very quickly and do your Data Science Common Line. So. Again, it's the same workflow. This Vagrant init will download this prepackaged VirtualBox image from, for Vagrant from the Vagrant cloud. Vagrant app will start it up, and with SSH, SSH you already can start to work with your statistical to tool like R, this statistical language. Now, some more example. That's something I package a little bit for myself. So there is this guy who, uh, who released the GCC cross compiler for the Atari ST, so 16-bit comp computer for the for the 90s. But comp cr uh, writing a cross compiler is comp and packaging that is some work, but unfortunately it's only available for Ubuntu. So I'm on Linux, I'm on Debian, I don't have Ubuntu, I can install the package directly, but if I do this vagrant init. I download the um, VirtualBox prepackage vagrant, vagrant app, vagrant SSH, and I can uh, already use that very quickly. Actually, a lot of organizations are shipping the SDK as a vagrant based box, so they put everything you need, like a version of compiler on PHP libraries or whatever you can need into a vagrant box. You download that and you can start to develop on all these three platforms where Vagrant and VirtualBox are supported. So MediaWiki is doing that, Atlassian is doing that, the Laravel framework, which is a PHP framework, is also doing that. 
Uh, it was actually the beginning, the main reason for Vagrant. I think it was written from an OS 6 developer who wants to have um, an environment, development environment similar to the server, which he could use on his workstation. So now we're going to see a little bit how it's working on the background because there has been a lot of magic and downloading stuff for the internet and whatever. <coughs> so this vagrant init command that we have seen in the beginning actually calls in the background this vagrant box command. So the vagrant box command will download from the vagrant cloud server or any HTTP <laughs> server what Vagrant calls a base box, which is basically a virtual box disk image with some specific customization, like for instance, there has to be a Vagrant user with a uh, sudo. So, as you see, it just downloads that from the internet, but it could be also a file image if you want to share that with your coworker, or it could be, for instance, any HTTP server you own. So the vagrant init command will now copy this base box that you have downloaded to the current directory and create here a new environment. What is a new environment is simply a directory where you have this vagrant file, which basically it's just something like this. It tell create here a new environment based on this uh, disk image and after you can add here all kind of customizations. Now, Vagrant app will start a virtual machine in the background using your Vagrant file. And Vagrant SSH will, will log you as a Vagrant user in the virtual machine. So all networking stuff is automatically handled in the background. You don't have, if you need, a, for instance, a new environment in a new virtual machine, you don't need to care about which IP address do I have to do, do you don't have to create users, you don't have to do think about why I'm doing some kind of what kind of port forwarding do I need to do SSH is everything is taken care in the background so vagrant has some extra capabilities besides creating these basic virtual machines so for instance you can create multiple environments based on the original base, base box so suppose for instance you need to have more than one uh, Debian environment when you want to break stuff, you don't need to do the download every time because it will recreate it. Uh, it's it, it will recreate a new environment each time you call the Vagrant init based on what you download before. So out of the box, you have also pre-configured share, share folders. So it means that this uh, directory where you create the Vagrant file is automatically exported in the virtual machine. So for instance, you can hack on your host workstation and everybody everything is uh, synchronized into the virtual machine and you can start here for instance a python server or ruby server and you actually running your software inside the virtual machine but you're developing on your local workstation you can add extra port forwarding for instance if you want to access a web server which is running inside uh, the virtual machine and also Vagrant has very interesting plugins that you can directly add from the command line and also actually also from your package manager because I've just heard that this uh, Vagrant Elixir plugin which allows to use Vagrant with Elixir container has been packaged by Antonio. So Antonio, if you're here, kudos. So you can also customize your virtual machine with provisioners. So, which means, for instance, you have this uh, basic Debian uh, environment in a vagrant base box, and you want to, for instance, recreate the production environment you have on your server. So you could add, of course, all the package you need with apt-get, re-export that as a base box, and share it to your coworker. But also, if you want to do this in a reproducible way, reproducible way, a way you can reproduce, I mean, uh, you can... <laughs> You got that. <laughs> so uh, Vagrant supports the uh, five uh, big uh, um, configuration stuff. So for instance, you can call an Ansible playbook and he will play that inside the Vagrant machine to set up, for instance, a whole server automatically in your virtual box environment. Vagrant has unfortunately some limitations that we're going to see there. 
So first of all, there is a question of trust for this from this vagrant base box that you download from the internet, from the vagrant cloud. So I'm going to read that cl that quote from uh, the vagrant uh, cloud uh, authors. Here are some things to note when you're choosing a box. The username of the user. If it's chest or canonical, you can likely trust the box more than anonymous user. So basically, I create on the Vagrant Cloud an account called Debian, but everybody could have done this. There is no kind of signature, there is no kind of validations. But there is a work in progress to do official base box from, uh, for Vagrant. Now, like Ubuntu is doing that already, and we have at the moment in the Vagrant Cloud Vanilla, the uh, virtu um, Vanilla um, Vagrant base box, but they are not official yet because they are not part of the of the Debian infrastructure. So VirtualBox is not that fa fast. When you start a Vagrant uh, environment, you need to do all this kind of uh, BIOS initialization and hardware in initialization, um, Grub, and you basically don't need that. And also, which is what I found particularly annoying in the work I'm doing because I'm working on virtualization, VirtualBox does not support nested virtualization. So for instance, you can uh, not uh, start Vagrant inside a KVM, or you cannot, inside a um, Vagrant, start a KVM. And this is annoying, actually, because, for instance, it means if you have uh, any kind of, using any kind of cloud provider where you have a virtual machine, you cannot start really with Vagrant and VirtualBox inside. So you have to switch to another provider like Vagrant Elixir but you lose a multi-platform aspect. So now I'm going to give some uh, example of how I use uh, Vagrant at work. So I work for this guy, Proxmox, <coughs> and we're going to see how we use Vagrant there. Uh, we will start uh, from a Debian-based box. We'll create two network cards. We will create an internal private network on one of these network cards and we will install a web application. So some words about Proxmox. So it's a seven years old platform for managing uh, virtual machines. It's basically a Perl library on top of KVM, LXC, ZFS, safe, and also storage technology, which expose the REST API. The REST API is consumed by the web interface and a common line tool for managing virtual machine. It's based on Debian stable, so it's AGPL, and for the level of complexity, it's somewhere, somewhere between uh, raw QME management and OpenStack. So you can start with one server on which you install the Proxmox V with a CD, and you, already, you can already create virtual machine, and after you can bring that into a cluster. But yeah, it's, I think the sweet spot for Proxmox is like if you have between 1 and 16 servers. It looks like this, a uh, common line interface, and you have interface for pro, uh, creating virtual machine. And uh, why did we use Vagrant? Is the thing is we have two ways of installing our software. One of them is <coughs> just a normal ISO that you use like bare for bare metal installer. And the other one is also possible actually by adding a special repository in some package to install um, Proxmox on top of Debian, and we didn't have any way of automated automating this. And the nice tool is like, after we have created this vagrant environment with um, with Proxmox, at the end we have also this new virtual box image that we can share with people in case, for instance, we want to provide a demo environment. So now there's going to be some terminal session, terminal session where we're going to see all the steps I mentioned before. So as I'm a bit lazy and I don't want to show you all my tick failures, I recorded this in a video screencast. Hope it's fine for you. So we look now at the Vagrant file from the, oh, I think I missed something, I went too fast. Yeah. Oh, you don't see anything. Yeah. 
Is it better? Okay. So, uh, it's a bit difficult, I agree. So we have here the Vagrant uh, file with a lot of configuration stuff. At the end, we will call an Ansible playbook. So the Ansible playbooks do a lot of things. You have to trust me now because you cannot read. <laughs> so we add a Debian repository after we install a lot of package. And now we can start with a Vagrant app. So he got this mm, basic uh, base box from the internet. Now he had it already. Now we're starting the virtual box uh, environment. So this is this time where it takes some time. So you see out of the box, he does this port forwarding for SSH. Now I guess VirtualBox is doing this hardware initialization on starting the Debian boot sequence. D. And now we're starting with uh, provisioning. So he do all this step of installing Proxmox on top of the base system. So we set a new root password, we add a app repository. <coughs> I think in this part of afterwards there is not so much read, so it should be readable. Now we install a Proxmox package, so these are all um, tasks of the Ansible manifest. After we create, we install a new kernel and we reboot using key exec, so we don't have to do a full reboot. And that's it. The software has been uh, completely and fully automatically installed on top on the of Debian, and at the end I have a environment that I can use to develop. That was it. Any questions? So, uh, uh, so, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. So you said that uh, there's no real cryptographic verification of Vagrant base boxes yet, but so why should I trust it at all? I mean, so uh, there's a reason why, for example, Debian packages all are signed. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, actually it's a reason why uh, at the moment I'm working on GPG signing the base box that we, uh, that we, so we have something we can trust for Debian, because at the moment there's nothing like this. So, but it's not built in in Vagrant. Vagrant. So one alternative, for instance, what is doing Ubuntu, is they host themselves the Vagrant base box, and then you have MDSI, um, you have some kind of checksumming, and they check the say, um, they, yeah, they sign the checksum. But they don't. You don't have this on the. Also, actually, there's some kind. It's possible to checksum. There's some kind of checksum support inside Vagrant, but you have no kind of uh, uh, yeah, GPG support. So you have to host the base box yourself and provide this if you want to gain more trust. You can also build, your build yourself a base box. One. There is a tool in Debian to do that, which is called uh, Bootstrap VZ, but I don't think the latest the version which is actually packaged works with uh, creating base box. Yeah. <laughs> Another question. Hello. Okay. Uh, what's the state of the KVM and LXC support uh, or of those drivers, provisioners? Uh, LXC works very well. So you, I think you need to put some, you need to add uh, this one line of configurations to change. And uh, KVM, it works through libvirts, and I didn't test it. But as far as I know, it's not working so good. And um, can I have a shared home dear in all my Vagrant boxes? So I have my uh, use my shell configuration in all the uh, Vagrant boxes? You can, uh, you can add uh, 
uh, out of the box, you, sh you share the folder where you are, where you started the um, Vagrant environment, but you, ca you can add also extra folders to share. You can share any folders you want. Okay, last question. The, uh, can I cache the virtual machine after it has been set up so that it won't run the setup procedure every time I start it? Um, actually, it does the setup procedure only the first time and after, if you specify the option minus minus provision, it will rerun the setup. But out of the box, it just does this the first time. Thank you. How, how does um, how does Vagrant handle um, distributing the corresponding source code for a given base box? So actually, the Vagrant people themselves don't distribute the base box. I don't know. Everybody is free to create your own base box. So what I did for Debian is just like I it's inside the Git repository, and you can rebuild all your step if. You can uh, rebuild all the base box yourself, of course, like we said before, but there is nothing done in this inside. So, so, so if you build a, a Debian uh, base, base box, you include the source code for all of the packages inside your Git repository? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. If you use uh, Bootstrap VZ, for instance, it will use a Bootstrap, Dev Bootstrap, uh, to fetch the packages, install everything again. You can also use Packer, which is another tool, to which works through the installer, the Debian installer, to create the base box, basically, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, cre I'm using a tool which is called Packer to create the base box. Basically, it calls a Debian uh, installer with a preset file and. Uh, at the end, it's just squeeze a disk image, and that's it you have. So it's a Debian installer, no more, no less. So how uh, Vagrant compares to Docker? Because I've seen that you're using it kind of uh, the same way. And if you, if you want to use Alexis, Docker, and Vagrant, then probably the same performance. Uh, Uh, it's a good question. I'm not a specialist of Docker. I think the difference is like with Vagrant, you have a full uh, virtualized. The aim of Vagrant is that you have a full operating system, and Docker is meant only for a single application where you have a, a limited a limited set of installed package. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. One of the main differences uh, in the basic setup is that uh, you use VirtualBox, which gives you portability. So in the time where uh, you couldn't use Docker on Windows, for instance, it was n uh, no, no go. So um, uh, with a single background file, which is close to the Docker file, um, you could have something portable for Mac, for Windows, and so on. Mm. Now, another big difference is the layered file system or the Onion file system. In Docker, if you have 10 virtual machines, uh, it's 10 times the disk size. Whereas in Docker, of course, you uh, you save if you have minimize uh, the difference between your machines. So that's, of course, there are options, extensions, plugins, and stuff. So maybe what I'm saying is just the basic difference. And actually, to even add some confusion, you can start Docker environment with Vagrant. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> because Vagrant has different kind of virtualization backend. Uh, the standard one is VirtualBox, but you can also start Docker environment. Yeah, with this boot to Docker. Hey, I want to only share a few notes on running uh, Vagrant with KVM, and basically, it doesn't work at all. It doesn't work at all. Yeah, it okay. tried very hard and it with like with this uh, libvirt plugin or with a different vagrant plugin. Um, I'm not quite sure which wi methods I tried, but uh, I tr uh, I made several attempts uh, and uh, maybe spend a few days or okay. maybe even more. It would be very great if it could be made to work with KVM. Mm -hmm. Please.
about the what about the packaging of Vagrant in Debian? Is it healthy? Uh, because at some point in time it got thrown out of testing probably because it was RC buggy. And mm -hmm. I thought that, uh, well, upstream provides Debian packages too. So mm -hmm. what's the situation? Are there any maintainers? Uh, actually, I think the maintainer of uh, Vagrant, if Antonio would be there, maybe he could answer. Antonio, are you here? No, but I think uh, actually it's quite healthy in Debian because Okay, it's quite healthy in Debian because you have the latest uh, version of uh, Vagrant, which is always packaged in uh, Debian, which I, I checked the last six months ago. So, Last question. It's more of a comment. I just wanted to add that I have used um, Vagrant with Libvirt and KVM with kind of six or eight virtual machines. So with the version from Jesse and the Libvirt plugin. So it works. It's not as nice as with VirtualBox because the... 9p file system stuff isn't integrated so well, but it basically works. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much.